Hello, thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your Tree Shelf. Today I'm doing a video which is about two things I want to take part in in the month of March. So, so far my plans for March, I'm currently um, over halfway through a buddy read with Sean and Bert from Pastoral Time and Charlotte from Tired Mama Tries to Read. So that will be finished within the next couple of days. And then doing a read, a buddy read with um, my friend Nancy. And so those two things I've got planned already. Um, I've also got some library books out which can sort of be renewed if necessary. Um, and then there's two things that I'd really like to take part in. So I'm only committing to one each of these at the moment. But if I get more done, then that's great. So the first one is the Irish Readathon. Now there are prompts for this, so um, I will link the page for the Irish Readathon so that you can go and check out the prompts. Because I'm only doing one, maybe two books, then I haven't um, gone along with the prompts. I've just pulled off um, my shelves the Irish books that I ha or books by Irish authors that I haven't yet read, and so I'm going to read one of these books which is also good because it will get something off my backlist. Right, so the first one is, well, I don't know what it's about, is this is The Gathering by Anne Enright. So two years ago, I should think, I read uh, The Green Road. The Green, I think it's called The Green Road um, by Anne Enright, and I really enjoyed it. And so I got this in a charity shop. Um, so I shall read the back for you. It says, The nine surviving children of the Hegarty clan gather in Dublin for the wake of their wayward brother Liam. It wasn't the drink that killed him, although that certainly helped. It was what happened to him as a boy in his grandmother's house in the winter of 1968. The Gathering is a novel about love and disappointment, about thwarted lust and limitless desire, and how our fate is written in the body, not in the stars. Ooh, that sounds quite dark. That sounds like it might be about abuse or something. I don't know, but... um. Yeah, it's a bit of a harrowing cover as well, isn't it? But I did really like The Green Road, and so I'm hoping that I'll like this one. The next one is one which I say this all the time, but I can't quite believe I haven't read. I've seen the film of it, and um, the film's good. And it's Room by Emma Donoghue, so I remember from the film um, that it's basically about a woman and her son who um, live in a room, um, a single room. The mother was kidnapped and... Um, she has raised her son in this single room and he doesn't know what is outside and yeah so i watched the film i don't know if the film is true to the book or not but um this is a such a battered copy like my friend claire gave this to me years ago and it's like totally falling to bits <laughs> like um and she just said yeah just read it do whatever you want with it and and don't give it back because i don't want it back so uh it's, yeah been totally bashed around <laughs> but um that's that one the next one is one that I might actually listen to on audio because I've heard so many people say that the audio is so good. Um, I bought this in a charity shop. It's in absolutely perfect condition. I got it for like a pound, a one pound fifty or something, and a one pound. Amazing! It is Milk Round by Anna Burns. Um, what spurred me on to get this in the end was seeing how much Heather loved it. Um, and because I'd had mixed feelings about it before then, but yeah, so I've listened to the sample on Audible and I really like it, so I may well use one of my credits, but I have got the, the book of it as well. And the next one is one that I, another one I found in a charity shop. There's a theme here. Can you tell I love charity shops? And this is um, A Week in Winter by Maeve Binchy. So I got this book when I was having a really hard time and I just went to a charity shop and bought all the books that looked really cosy because I wanted some comfort reading. And so this one, it says, um, the Sheedy sisters had lived in Stone House for as long as anyone could remember, set high on the cliffs on the west coast of Ireland, overlooking the windswept Atlantic Ocean. It was falling into disrepair until one woman with a past she needed to forget breathed new life into the place. Now a hotel with a big warm kitchen and log fires, it provides a welcome few can resist. Winnie is generally able to make the best of things until she finds herself on, on the holiday from hell. John arrived on an impulse after he missed a flight at Shannon. And there's Henry and Nicola burdened with a terrible secret who are hoping the break at Stonehouse will help them 
find a way to face the future. So um, yeah, it sounds cosy. And the writing is quite big. I think it would be a really quick read, even though it's quite a thick book. Um, I've read Mae Finchy when I was at school, but I don't really remember much about her or the books at the time. And then I've got three books by the same author, um, which I haven't read yet, obviously, or they wouldn't be on this pile. And the first one, they're all by Cecilia Ahern, the first one is A Place Called Here. Uh, I won't read the back of all three because that will be boring. So it's basically about um, a guy, a schoolmate of a, of a girl who went missing and she still wants to find him um, even though this happened years ago and um, she spots an ad in a missing persons agency and goes to try and find him. So that's that one. The other one is called, or the second one, is called um, The Book of Tomorrow. So I think this is about, it's got a gorgeous cover. She, this girl called Tamara, um, she goes to a mobile library, which is in her village, and she finds a book which looks a bit like this one. And she said what, this is what she discovers in the pages takes her breath away and shakes her world to its core. A mesmerising story about how tomorrow can change what happens today. So, um, she often has some kind of magical realism type stuff in her books. And the final one by her is The Time of My Life. And so it's about a woman who has taken her eye off the ball and busied herself with other things and completely and utterly ignored her life. And it says now her life has written to her, summoned her, and there was only one thing for it. She had to go and meet it face to face. So, um... I really should, they've been on my shelves for years, those three. I went through a phase where I like read loads of Celia Ahern when I was a junior doctor. And I really liked it. And one of the books particularly I read on Honeymoon. And I, that would always remind me of like my honeymoon, which is nice. Um, but then I found that the writing wasn't always as good as I wanted it to be. So I stopped reading them a bit. So yeah, I think it's time to um, get back into them. So that's those ones. I'm just going to put them down. The other one I really wanted to take part in was Middle Grade March. Um, there are two hosts. I will link their channels and I will link the um, Middle Grade March announcement video. This also has prompts. And again, I am not following the prompts for the same reasons. So um, the prompts are in the videos and there's some really good reading suggestions and stuff. And... So I've just got together the middle grade books that I've got on my shelves that I would like to read. And again, I'm going to commit to reading one of them this month. So I didn't include YA, because obviously this is middle grade March, not YA March. Um, so I think I've split them correctly. But, so some of these are classics. And these are all books, I think with no exception. Uh, no, a couple of exceptions. These are mostly books that I've read as a child and have um, lovely memories of and want to reread. So, I bought, there's like a children's classic series that I bought in Tesco's. I remember like going with my dad, I think, and there was this huge set of like about 20 children's classics that I could buy. And I remember I was so excited and I got them. And I still have some of them. I think some of them I gave away over the years. So the first one is The Railway Children by E. Nesbitt. Um, this is obviously a really famous children's classic and it's about three siblings called Roberta, Peter and Phyllis. And I remember that they go away from their dad and they live in this kind of really, um, I think it's maybe like a mining town um, in the country. So not maybe, I don't know. And they, um, yeah, they end up playing with, by the railway and stuff. And I remember the film of it quite well. I say quite well. I can remember loving the film when I was a child. I don't remember reading the book. This looks like it hasn't been read. So maybe I haven't even read this. Maybe I've just watched the film and felt like I've read it. But um, yeah, I really want to reread that. Or you know what I mean. The next one I definitely read. I definitely absolutely loved. And the film's coming out in Easter. So a really good reason to read it again. And that is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Um, this is about Mary Lennox, who is from an upper class family in who and she's raised in India. And then she comes back to England and she's like, um, is it her, it's either her or the little boy? I think it's her that's kind of described as sickly. And um, she meets this boy called Dickon, 
who is um has a way with animals and nature and stuff and then um she also discovers colin that's it her invalid cousin who is cured by the magical powers of the secret garden so yeah i really am looking forward to that too next is a book which i think i listened to the audio of when i was a child on tape and i definitely used to watch it on tv um but i've got the book of it now because after i read tilly and the book wanderers i had to pick it up and i'm just trying to get the price tag off the front okay there we go and that ooh, avalanche hold on that is anne of green gables by ellen montgomery um so yeah um from 1908 oh I didn't realise it was still And there's a whole series of Anne books. So if I really like this one, there's a whole other series of those. The next one is an Arthur Cronin Doyle book, which is The Hound of the Baskervilles. I definitely haven't read this before. I don't even know if I've read any Sherlock Holmes before. Um, and this is a standalone um, Sherlock Holmes and Watson story. And I thought that this would be nice to read with the children when they're old enough. Um, but I would like to try it too. Next is one I've talked about before. This is the first book, I, the first sort of middle grade book I ever remember buying. And I remember getting it at, on the same day as I got um, a reading lamp. And so I was like super excited for it to get dark so I could go to bed and read it with my lamp. And this is The Animals of Falling Wood by Colin Dan. This used to be a TV series. And as you can see from the front cover, and it was published in... 1979 wow mm. okay um and then it was reprinted in the early 90s which is when i suspect the um tv series was on on bbc and um it's basically about a group of these lovely animals here who were living in farthing wood and then a construction company comes to do some building and they have to try and find a new home and it's really cute um then i have two books by the same author these I both remember from school and um, I'm just peeling off another price sticker and I really wanted to reread them because you know like the books you read in school or the teacher reads them to you and you just like really have really lovely memories of that time and so that's why I really wanted to get these ones and they're both set in like I think in wartime Britain. So the first one is um, The Peppermint Pig by Nina Borden and this is about um, a little pig and he was given to um, a mother of children and he was like naughty and clever and um, helps them through one of the most difficult years of their lives and then the other one I asked my husband for this for Christmas because I really wanted um, to own my own copy and this is by Nina Borden as well this is called Carrie's War and I can remember I think I was in year four so that would be turning nine when the teacher read this to us and I just remember loving it so much. This is set in World War II and it's about um, Nick and Carrie who are evacuated from London to Wales and um, they are with a really strict couple. Uh, they're staying with them and then they meet another um, evacuee and called Albert and he's staying like um, a much with much nicer people and um, I just remember it being about about that and um, yeah so I really hope I love it as much this time so next is one which I do remember the name I doubt I don't think I've ever read it and I um, got it after I had Heather talk about it on when she read it for Believeathon last year and that is Goodnight Mr Tom by Michelle Magorian and this is another evacuation story I think it's when about a, got a little boy called um what's he called Willie <laughs> um and he's evacuated and he's got a really cruel mother and he's evacuated to stay with Mr Tom he is really lovely and he starts to flourish and then he has to go or his mum wants him back and I guess he doesn't want to go because he's had a much happier life with his um, new parents. And then the final one I have is um, Heidi by Joanna Spirey. 
So I definitely had this on audio. I remember listening to the audio millions of times. I'm sure it was probably an abridged version. And I watched the film. There's like um, a film which is maybe even a Swiss film. I'm not sure. It's not in English and it's dubbed, but it's dubbed really well. So it doesn't feel like the really bad, like Bruce Lee dubbing that you get to see. Um, and yeah, so um, I really, really want to reread this because I loved this story so much and I nearly called well I wanted to call my son Heidi if he'd been a girl but obviously he was a boy so he isn't called Heidi <laughs> um yeah so I really I really love that name so that's all of the middle grade that I have as well so I'm gonna have a really hard time deciding between the Irish books and the middle grade books which ones I would like to read so um let me know if you're taking part in either of those and if you are what you're planning on reading if you're not just let me know if you've read any if you fancy reading any um and what your reading plans are for this month um just to also say i am wearing my pajama top <laughs> it may not be apparent but i had i like it's quite late it's like um thursday night and i just haven't had a chance to film anything and it's dark outside obviously because it's night time the kids are asleep I had a shower, put my pyjamas on, and I've got a light shining right in my face. So hopefully the um, lighting's okay. But yeah, just in case it looks like I'm wearing some sort of weird top, it is my pyjama top. So probably shouldn't have confessed to that, but there you go. So anyhow, I hope you have a really good weekend, even though by the time my really slow internet uploads this, it'll probably be way after the weekend. And um, I will speak to you all soon. Bye!